Hello everyone and welcome back. So I got a lot of great feedback from the first video I did on Frax, but I wanted to make a second video because I got a lot of questions about what are the changes that are happening in version 2. So this is a Medium post that Sam put out. I'm going to just walk you through everything now. So the first thing they introduce you to, and one of the most interesting changes, is the Algorithmic Market Operations Controller. A very confusing term, I know. But if uh, you break it down, it's actually somewhat simple. An AMA controller is an autonomous contract that enacts arbitrary FRAX monetary policy so long as it does not lower the collateral ratio and change the FRAX price. The most important thing to note here is that the AML automatically pauses if FRAX lowers, it loses its peg and the collateral ratio has to increase, meaning more FRAX has to be backed by USDC. So that means that nothing crazy can happen here. It's pretty conservative and uh, all of the ways that the protocol is gonna be generating revenue are secure. So the first example of an AMO controller that I think will really help clear things up is the collateral investor contract that they've already deployed and has already been working for the protocol for some time now. Now, if we go over to the FRAX website here, you can see in the bottom right, uh, we have the total value of FRAX, not the FXS token, just FRAX. And you can see here that actually the protocol is only holding about 36.2 million USDC. And the rest of that collateral is actually backed in interest earning protocols. We have the Aave protocol with $15 million. We have Compound with $30 million, And we have Yearn with $15 million. And what's basically happening here is the USDC that gets placed into the FRAX protocol to mint new FRAX is being automatically invested into lending protocols that are fairly safe in the DeFi space and earn a pretty substantial yield. So I think up to date, a few million dollars has been earned in interest by lending out our collateral that we put into the FRAX protocol. So that's an example of the first AML controller that's automatically using the collateral in the FRAX system to generate more revenue for the protocol. So the second AMO controller interacts with the Curve protocol. Now, the FRAX deployer address actually owns admin privileges to its own Curve pool. So this means that the FRAX protocol can actually get revenue from this Curve pool, uh, which means that it's in FRAX's best interest to help optimize this pool. So this one's a bit more technical, but they do a pretty good job of breaking it out in the Medium article. So they basically say, the Curve AMO can put FRAX plus USDC into its own Curve protocol and control TVL or total value locked. Since the collateral ratio re-collateralizes when FRAX price drops by more than one cent under one dollar, that means that there is some value of FRAX that can be sold directly into the Curve protocol before the FRAX price slips by one percent. What that essentially means is that FRAX can mint FRAX into Curve without affecting the FRAX collateral ratio. Now they go into the numbers here a little bit about how much algorithmic FRAX, that's FRAX not backed by USDC, can enter into the curve protocol without affecting the collateral ratio or the price of FRAX. So you can see here that in a $330 million FRAX pool, uh, the pool can support a minimum of $39.2 million FRAX sell pressure. So that's someone sell, converting FRAX into USDC or another stablecoin, and that's without the price moving by one cent. That means that the FRAX pool can support a minimum of 39.2 million fully algorithmic FRAX. Again, that's FRAX that's not backed into the market. If you're not familiar with Curve, uh, I'll put the link in the description, but basically you can see the FRAX Curve pool here. Uh, and it's pretty liquid, so you can see that this is a $10,000 FRAX sell order to USDC, and it just barely affects the price. So that means they really have a lot of room to mint algorithmic FRAX into this pool and accrue more revenue for FXS holders. So they go on to say that this is actually really important to the FRAX protocol because it basically sets a floor of how, how much algorithmic FRAX can be in circulation without breaking the peg. Uh, you can read more about this in the Medium post. They go into a bit more detail, and of course, the link is below. So the next AMO controller, and this is one that I'm most excited about, is the Tornado Cash one. So if you're not familiar with the Tornado Cash protocol, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, so you basically deposit an amount of currency, uh, whether that's ETH, DAI, CDAI, etc., and you deposit that in fixed increments. Now those fixed increments all get pooled together with tons of other deposits, and then when you're ready to withdraw, you can withdraw to any address so long as you have the code they gave you when you deposited. And so this means that that new address where you withdrew ETH or DAI to has no way to be traced back to that original address that deposited. 
Now, going back to Frax, so essentially they want to allow new Frax to be minted directly into Tornado Cash, and so then when it's withdrawn by an address, it can be completely anonymous, and they won't know which address called that mint function to mint new Frax. This is really exciting for DeFi, in my opinion, and will help uh, create more anonymity in this space and allow people to withdraw stable coins anonymously, which I think is really exciting. So the next AMO controller is Frax Bonds. Now, Frax decided to come up with a bond system because right now when people redeem Frax for USDC and the protocol increases the collateral ratio, that has a really downward negative sell pressure on the FXS token. The reason for this is that when Frax is sold to USDC, a portion of that is paid out in FXS and that FXS is often sold just directly on the open market. Now, with the Frax bond system, uh, if you wanted to get out of Frax, you could actually sell your Frax into a Frax bond and that bond would mature over a very long period of time, such as a year, which they highlight in the doc here, um, and would actually pay you a small amount of interest over that time. So an example of this would be you could buy Frax bonds for 50 cents on the dollar, and then over a year, the price of that bond would mature to a full dollar. You can see on the website here, they haven't implemented yet. It's coming soon. Uh, but I think it's an interesting feature and will lower the volatility of the FXS token. So those are all the new announcements in V2. They go on to highlight a few community proposals that they'd love to see implemented in, and they want new developers to come in and actually build these AMA controllers and implement them in different protocols. So one of the things I'm most excited about is a Frax Lending AMO controller. Uh, this one's actually pretty simple to understand, but I think it's really powerful. So this controller would essentially mint Frax into money markets like Compound or Cream, and they would allow anyone to borrow Frax by paying interest. So this Frax is all algorithmic and is minted into the money markets, uh, but it doesn't enter circulation because it's not withdrawn unless someone puts up the collateral to borrow it. And because all of these protocols require you to put up more than 100% collateral, all of this Frax that's initially algorithmic would become backed uh, by collateral. So this is a really exciting way to get more Frax out in the system without affecting the collateral ratio, without lowering the price, the price of Frax, or affecting the system in general at all. So there are a few other items on the roadmap that they touched on. Uh, one is that the Frax and FXS tokens are coming to the Binance Smart Chain. Uh, it's not clear if staking or farming uh, will be on the Binance Smart Chain, but the tokens are moving over, which is interesting and exciting. So new protocols and yield firms can use Frax as a native stablecoin. Uh, the next is just an announcement that the FinNexus uh, pool for options has opened up, and I'll show you that here. Uh, so FinNexus is an options trading platform, and to pay for the option premium, you can now pay with Frax. Uh, you could also do it with USDC, USDT, or their native token. So next is just an announcement that Frax is on Matic, or the Matic network, and is on QuickSwap. And you can see here that QuickSwap has incentivized a Frax FXS liquidity pool with 38 quick a day. And you can check on CoinGecko how much quick is worth and if that's a profitable yield firm. Next, they talk about the updates they made to the PID controller that sets the collateral ratio. So the new PID controller will also account for market cap, liquidity, and price. Um, so now the protocol will just be a little more reactive and re-collateralize or lower the collateral ratio if needed. And finally, they introduced Frax Liquidity Ventures. So Frax is trying to incentivize the adoption of Frax in different trading pairs, and new protocols and projects. And so to help incentivize that, they're actually offering FXS rewards and grants to do that. Uh, so if you're a developer and interested in applying to that, uh, definitely reach out to their team. I believe Telegram is a great way to get a hold of them. Um, they're usually very responsive there. And at the very bottom of the post, they also included their investors and backers that helped uh, bring Frax to where it is today. Uh, this was previously unreleased, so if you're interested in researching who invested in Frax, you can check out the Medium post for that. So thank you guys so much for checking out this second video about the Frax protocol. Um, I did enjoy this process a lot, so I do want to talk more about DeFi protocols and projects and different yield firms in the future. And of course, I'll keep covering Frax. So if you want to subscribe, please do. Um, and I hope to have consistent videos out for you all. So thank you all so much and I'll see you on the next one.